Welcome to Five Points of Articulation, where I review action figures and then articulate five points to help you decide if you want to add that figure to your collection. The five points I discuss are packaging, presentation, posability, playability, and price. I'm Jason, and if you enjoy my content, please like, share, subscribe, do all the YouTube rigmarole. Today, we're taking a look at the DC Multiverse Batman of Earth 2. Starting off with the packaging, and we have a standard DC Multiverse window box. Already seeing something I have a feeling is going to annoy me. On the side, we can see that this Batman has been taken from Arkham Knight. Not entirely sure why. Especially when the back of the box has artwork from the comic instead of the video game. Artwork that I might add is inaccurate. Even so, for packaging, I'm giving this Batman one whole point. Moving on to presentation, and the top of his head, Batman stands at 7 inches, but to the top of his ears, he stands at seven and a quarter. You might be wondering, what is Earth 2 and who is this Batman? Earth 2 is where the Golden Age versions of DC heroes continued to live after limitations from the Comic Code Authority forced the company to desensitize their comics, leading to the dawn of the Silver Age. There, Bruce Wayne continued to be the Golden Age Batman until Flashpoint made Thomas Wayne as Batman very, very popular. Wanting to bring that version of the character back, DC retconned Batman's origin and decided that Thomas secretly survived the mugging in Crime Alley. Bruce dies and Thomas decides to take up the mantle of Batman in his son's honor. First things first, I like this head sculpt and I'm really excited to do the swaps later. Second, I love this color scheme. I remember somebody saying that it looks like the 1966 Batmobile turned into a costume. Between the black body, the red pinstriping, and especially the red Bat logo, I can hardly disagree. And if you're curious, here's how they'd look together. Also, I'm pretty sure it was Robo in an episode of The Weekly who said it, but if I'm wrong, sound it off in the comments. Getting back to the figure, and if you look at the Earth 2 utility belt, you'll notice it's very similar to Flashpoint. This design is unique for only having two fins on the gloves, a red lining to the cape, a cape by the way that's very thick and heavy to accommodate that paint, and of course burning red eyes that you're going to have to repaint if you want to put them on any Bruce bodies. There's some nice texturing throughout, and the boots feel very classic, a little bit of tread on them, but then we get to the middle, and one of four things I really do not like about this figure. As you can see, the costume has this triangle pointing down to his belly button, and as you can see, in a relaxed pose, it doesn't line up. Similar to Booster Gold, the only way it works is if you arch him completely back. Not only that, but the whole torso just feels short and stocky, kind of like it was smushed down too far. This brings me to my second major issue, the proportions. As I've already stated, his torso is too short, his legs are too short, with the calves being stumpy compared to the thighs, and his arms are way too long. The frustrating part is that because of the texture, you can't swap it out with longer leg figures like Three Jokers or Hush. All of that can contributes to my third major issue, he's way too short. Especially when the box advertises him as an alternate skin for this. Lastly, both hands are in an uncharacteristically relaxed position. No trigger hands to hold one of Thomas Wayne's beloved guns, and he can't even throw a punch. More about the height and hands though during playability. While this is a compelling design, there are a few things that don't really work for me, and I think I've gone on about them at great enough length. By no means a horrible figure for presentation, I'm giving this Batman, half a point. Moving on to Poe's ability, and this is all basically boilerplate. There is, however, one minor surprise. From the top, and it should come as no surprise that Thomas's head's in a dumbbell joint, up this much, this far down, really great tilt, and all the way around. Because of the cape, he can only raise his arms up this high, though he does get forward and back thanks to the rotator cuff. Naturally, he has bicep swivel, double jointed elbows, but swivel hinge wrists. No wrist ball this time. Usually, they only use this on Mega Fig, so this is a surprise. Using these hinges and they can raise up this high and this far down. Chom Dom Showa. Moving to the middle and ugh. As I previously stated, arching him back is the only way to make this design work, and this is how far back he can go. Hunching forward, and that's the best he can do, but I find myself asking if this is the best that McFarlane toys can do. After all this time, I really struggle to understand why they can't get the idea to add a bit more of a groove. There's certainly enough tutorials out there showing a real interest for it. Ranting aside, below the belt and he has a typical McFarlane hips. They can kick just under 90 degrees and split this wide. Very little twist at the hip this time around, but he does have very good double jointed knees, toe articulation, and ankles that can swivel, hinge, and pivot. With the exception of the diaphragm, which I think I've talked to death, the articulation on this figure is everything you'd come to expect from a DC multiverse. The swivel hinge wrists do limit some of your options, but not enough to dock at points. For poseability, I'm giving Earth 2 Batman 
whole point. Moving on to playability, and Thomas comes with a trading card and a figure stand. If you want to take the time to read it, you'll discover that it's actually inaccurate. Instead of the origin of Earth 2 Thomas Wayne, it's the backstory for Flashpoint. Unlike Earth 2, where Bruce still grows up to be Batman and then Thomas takes over after he dies, in Flashpoint, Bruce is the one who's killed in the alley, and both Thomas and Martha survive. Thomas becomes Batman instead of Bruce, and Martha, driven insane by the death of her son, becomes the Joker. In the big picture, this is a small thing, but between the Earth 2 Batman and the movie Shazam, I'm kind of tired of the trading cards getting it wrong. There are those who feel like these are throwaway accessories, and when you can't be bothered to get the basic details right, it kind of feels like that's true. Otherwise, all this Batman comes with is a Batarang. As I said in presentation, these hands are a bit more relaxed, but he can still hold it. Even so, what this figure desperately needs are alternate fists. And honestly, some other Arkham-related gadgets wouldn't have hurt either. But playability is more than just accessories or the lack thereof. It's also about how well your figure plays with others. Starting off with one Batman whose head I can't swap, and here we have three Jokers. Immediately we can see the height disparity. And for a couple of non-McFarlane Arkham figures, here we have the Mattel version of Arkham City and the DC Direct version of Arkham Asylum. Here's the DC Direct and McFarlane version of the Arkham Asylum Joker. For another video game Joker, here's Mortal Kombat 11. But for a comic version, here's my own custom Kit Bash. As for Arkham Knight though, and here we have Scarecrow being taller than Batman, as well as the Arkham Knight himself, Red Hood. For some other villains, and here we have the DC Direct Arkham Asylum Harley and the Mattel Arkham City. Here's the Arkham Origins Deathstroke. From what I understand, Deathstroke is taller than Batman, so this one's okay. Here's the Mattel Arkham City Two-Face along with Two-Face from the Dark Knight. And then here we have the DC Direct Arkham Knight Catwoman along with the McFarlane Toys Arkham City. Here's the Arkham City Penguin. And just for scaling purposes, the DC Designer Series Greg Capullo Riddler. Flipping over to the Bat Family, and I'm going to do something a little bit different. In the spirit of a black and red Batman, I'm only going to be showing black and red sidekicks. Here's Tim Drake as Red Robin. Here's DC Essentials and DC Multiverse versions of Nightwing. Note the matching gangly arms on Essentials. Here we have the Red Hood. The Three Jokers version is definitely better proportioned. And then lastly, here we have the Mattel Batwoman. I got the idea for a black and red Batman team from some pics I saw on a Facebook group. Not exactly comics accurate, but it is still pretty cool. For just one Justice League ally, and here we have the angry laser eyes hush and Action Comics 1000 versions of Superman. For a relative scale comparison, I thought we'd keep that black and red energy going with Amazing Fantasy 15 and the Superior Spider-Man. But as always, here he is with Stealth Iron Man. Well, of course, I know what a lot of you are here for, head swaps. First up, and here we have Detective Comics 1000. Despite the Earth 2 figure being too short, this head scales really well. Paint in some white eyes and you've got yourself a Batman. Next, unsurprisingly, is Flash point. This is another one I find fascinating. The peg is longer, so it gives him more of a neck, which I actually think improves this figure. Other way around, and if you wanted to make your two Thomases a bit more consistent, I think you could get away with this. Oddly enough, despite the extended peg, he doesn't have an extended neck. For a similar head sculpt, and here we have Dark Knight's Death Metal, I'm starting to think that head swaps are beginning to redeem this figure. In this case, even the red eyes work. Other way around is fairly comparable to the Flashpoint head. Next up, and here we have the Grim Knight. This one is really cool. Once again, given the tone of this particular character, I think you could leave the red eyes on. The other way around isn't too bad if you wanted a shorter eared option. Moving on, and here we have Arkham Knight. Not surprisingly, this head is too big and sits too low, and that's despite having the same extra long peg, but this one isn't half bad. Leastways, it's a lot more proportionate than I expected. Do note, you will need to borrow a shorter peg from a different figure. Next up, and here we have Rebirth. If you like it, that's fine, but I personally think this head is too big. Ironic, considering how small the figure is. Other way in the tiny head and extra long arms looks downright ridiculous. For one of my least favorites, and here we have Dark Detective, I think you can guess how I feel about this one, but as long as you swap out for a smaller peg, this one isn't bad. And honestly, the skin tones match up pretty well. For one of my favorite figures for head swapping, and here we have Future State, as always, this looks great, and again, two fins on the gauntlets. Other way around adds a lot of menace. I think the white eyes are better here because they pop out against the black and red, making them really stand out. Next up is the similarly scaled page punchers. Again, the white eyes really pop, and the head's a decent size for this body. Alternately, this one is sized pretty well too. With some paint, this would be a really cool custom. Here we have the Page Puncher based on Injustice 2. If you wanted to give this figure a more live-action feel, this head would work. You would, of course, have to paint it to match. All the way around, and just like the first Page Punchers, I think there's something there. An all red and black version of this figure, for example, could be a lot of fun. Lastly, here we have Arkham City. As you'd expect, this one is too big and too low. This, on the other hand, is an another story. I dare say this works better than the actual Arkham City head. This just might be a winner. 
aren't as good as this Batarang is, what Batman really needs are some more hands. Specifically, he needs fists, but he'd also benefit from trigger hands. Mainly, this Batman's greatest shortcoming is his scale. If this was the start of a whole slew of Earth 2 figures, that might work. But as an alternate skin of this? Definitely not. Even as a companion to the Thomas Wayne they've already given us, he sadly comes up short. For playability, I'm giving Earth 2 Batman half a point. This leaves us with nothing left to discuss but the price. This figure is the first DC Multiverse I've purchased with the new $23 price hike, and I have to admit I'm feeling a bit stung. Credit where it's due, McFarlane Toys is one of the last to raise its prices, and it's also not that big of a leap. But even if it was only $20, I still have way too many nitpicks to justify the cost. For price, I'm giving Earth 2 Batman half a point for a surprising total of 3.5 out of 5. But just because I'm disappointed doesn't mean that you are. Let me know what you think of this Batman in the comments below. If you like this video, check out one of these. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back again real soon, but until then, play nice and have fun.